guys, I'm Ray Umali and I am attending culinary school to get a job at one of these food media agencies to be a food producer or food publisher or food content creator. Um, I also just have a deep, deep passion for food and I'm trying to make food content here on YouTube. So uh, before I get into day 14 of culinary school, as you see here, uh, I just wanna just sort of quickly check in and let you guys know how I'm doing um, confidence wise, skill wise, just a quick benchmark of where I am um, two, three weeks in now at culinary school. So um, confidence level is a roller coaster ride in culinary school. I really felt like before school, I was somewhat of an adequate cook. And, you know, every day I'm reminded that I am a terrible cook and I feel like I'm relearning the skills to become a better, uh, more uh, effective uh, uh, cook. So, um, confidence wise, I'm. I'm uh, I have to say I'm a bit, I'm struggling a little bit in terms of where I am in my progression and uh, where I thought I, I should be by now. Um, but I know I'm just sort of reminding myself that it takes time and I also need to put in more work and more hours towards uh, practicing and honing my craft. Um, it's. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a humbling, humbling experience, especially comparing myself to a lot of the cooks in the kitchen that I share every day at culinary school. Um, that being said, it's it's still a really great environment for me to learn in. And and I feel like a lot I look up to a lot of these individuals um, to to raise the bar for myself. Um, you know, I always try to remind myself to just run my own race and focus on what I can do to get myself to be better and, and be patient about that process. That being said, that is harder to do than it actually saying it. Um, and you know, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling that process and I'm feeling like I should be better than where I am now. And sh I know should statements are, should statements, um, they are unhealthy and you know, um, something that I should just be aware of. But um, but yeah, I just yeah want, feel like I could do a lot better than where I am um, at day 14. Um, it's, it's frustrating because I, I, you know, I put a lot of expectations on myself and, and want to do better and think I can do better and will do better. But um, I'm just a little bit down. Confidence is a little bit down. Um, uh, uh, yeah, there, there's not much more to say than that. Um, just trying to remind myself to take it day by day, put in the work, put in the hours, um, and control the things I can control. That being my attitude, um, showing up on time, showing up prepared, taking good notes, um, and just being patient. Um, so into day 14 of culinary school, my big intention coming in today was really slowing myself down and making sure that my mise en place was in place and also my station was um, clean throughout. I feel like for the most part, I did just that. I'm, I'm really trying to slow myself down and I feel like I did that. Um, I feel like I'm rushing less, um, but still having that sense of urgency and I think that will get better over time. Um, that part of it was great. Um, I feel like though the big part that was missing was the end result or the product or the food. Um, the food, as I'm going to be talking about, that I came uh, put up um, to present to Chef was not up to par with my expectations and certainly not up to par with Chef's expectations. Uh, and, 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 you know, he let me know fair, fair enough that what I need to work on, I, you know. So um, so today we worked on uh, mise en place, uh, got all our vegetables. We made ratatouille today, so that was also a lot of fun. We didn't do it the confit way, which is a Keller way. Uh, ratatouille, is a, ratatouille, as most people know it, um, is the confit way, which is like, you know, Pixar version ratatouille. Thomas Keller ratatouille type of thing where it's like confit in the oven, blah, 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 with 
A lot of it is in, on the mandolin. You can look that up. Uh, there's a ton of videos on YouTube about the Confi Keller version, the Pixar version. Um, we did the more traditional version we, where we sort of dice everything up, um, saute, and then put it into the oven. This this is a, both a saute technique practice and also a roasting technique practice. And then also with, we went into um, our introduction to grilling and the different types of ways you can grill vegetables and the sort of the techniques to get hash marks. So to get a hash mark, you're just imagining the grill, um, a sort of like a clock and you put your, excuse me, and you put your vegetables uh, at 10 o'clock and at two o'clock to get those sort of hash marks in your vegetables. If you care about that, cool. If you don't care about that, also cool. Uh, but that's sort of the, the way they teach you how to uh, properly grill and then uh, we keep a lot of our vegetables in the oven to keep it hot and also to finish it off. Um, this really is to one thing that I should probably, I'm sort of thinking through is grilling here is like a, a, a char cook. It doesn't have to be fully cooked because it will actually go in the oven to keep hot. So one thing to keep that in mind um, moving forward, I put my vegetables on the very the hottest part of the grill and you'll see the end result. Um, there is a lot of charring in the vegetables also due to the fact that it was soaking in an oily vinaigrette. Um, and then also we talked about sandwich building and basically taking the things we grilled into a sandwich. And then we again finished on our deep frying, which we started our sub subpar cooked yesterday, our French fries. So we finished that off. Um, this is key. Uh, we we fried our French fries twice, and there's a there's a there's a reason for that. It comes out much. You know, I've talked about it on I think my fried chicken video, my Taiwanese fried chicken video, where I double fry the 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 chicken, the fried chicken, and it comes out a more uh, crispy product. And I believe that's how a lot of fast food chains do it. They sub cook it or. Uh, par cook it and then freeze it send it off to like a McDonald's and their chains and then they finish it off in the deep fryer once it's there It just tastes so much better. I mean everybody's had a french fry before so you can really tell the difference between a fry That's cooked once and a fry that's cooked twice So just a quick thing there and then we uh, made romesco sauce as a group um, the sous chefs were sort of in, uh, in charge of leading the way on that. I sort of helped out where I could, um, but they were sort of taking on most of that responsibility. Um, that being said, my partner was actually the sous chef, so I was sort of trying to help her as much as I could. Got the blender and started off with the t tomatoes, charring the tomatoes. Um, this also involves um, some crust up bread, and also some roasted, uh, I wanna say almonds. Uh, I could be wrong, but it's sort of a, a red sauce that I'll show later on and then ratatouille and then grilled vegetables here. So here is what chef's ratatouille looks like. I wanna show this first, not mine, but chef's. And everything is, you know, even cut. You can tell they're half inch cubes, half inch squares. Whereas if you compare it to mine, we're not looking at plating here, just looking at result and cut. Mine is sort of all over the place. You see one's, you know, rectangle, one square, one is like oblong, one is in a triangle. So really looking at knife cut. Um, doneness was was fine. Saltiness or seasoning was, was less than. So it, in other words, it needed a little bit more salt. So here, here comes, you know, really where at day 14, um, you know, I feel like I can do so much better in, but I'm just missing, missing the beat there um, with my knife cuts and the flavoring and the seasoning. So uh, really, I mean, I'm happy that it came out, but it's, it's, it's not, it, the pro it has to be all about the product. And if it's all about the product, I totally missed a mark in this case. So uh, really bummed about that end result and I know I have a lot more to work on. I taste, I must have tasted this dish a few times before I presented it. So I thought the seasoning was there and 
Um, I guess I'm just afraid to over season. And at this point, maybe I, I should, I don't know. Yeah, I, I just have things to work on, things to work on for sure. Um, and here is what chef's sandwiches look like. Everything again is all grilled vegetables. So he, he layered it nicely and you can tell here uh, how he just sort of stacked up the um, the cheese into the vegetables. So this is a completely vegetarian sandwich, which by the way was super, super delicious. Um, it was like marinated in this vinaigrette that we also made, uh, red wine vinaigrette that we also made. It was delicious uh, and finished off in the grill. This is what mine looked like. See the note of, and also the, note the golden fries. Um, we had to present this dish hot, so everything had to be hot. So that means I really needed to plate my sandwich and then also have my, my fries in the deep fryer or already have had the fries. Um, so they're a bit, uh, they were presented warm. So that was a plus. Um, what he noted, um, which he mentioned, he, he warned me and my partner earlier was that our vegetable was coated in too much oil, which caused a lot of the dark spots in the vegetables. I felt personally too that I uh, overcooked some of the over grilled some of the vegetables um it you, you you can't really leave it out in the hottest part and just sort of leave it alone uh, i did that and it, it was just my bad it was my bad and um yeah there's no excuse um but the plate was presented hot his also comment was this is a garlic aioli that we made yesterday never ever 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 Put a garlic aioli in a hot dish because it's an emulsification and it'll it'll break once it touches a hot dish so uh that's a comment from him there um one thing that he didn't notice but i sort of noticed later on was that if you can see here this sandwich has a tomato which means i completely forgot to add my tomato that is a huge no-no in, in my world and everyone's world right like that's that's just a general thing if i had a tomato i would just put it right smack dab in this middle to sort of break out the colors a little bit more also it's worth noting the romesco sauces here but uh this is the sort of romesco sauce you see where it's a it's a bit orangey like a tomato orangey sauce it's really really delicious but yeah, again, I missed, I missed the sandwich. It was almost there. I felt like I'm glad I presented a hot dish. I, I'm glad, I mean, I tasted the sandwich. It tasted good. Missed the mark, missed the mark a little bit on the grilling and also um, didn't add the, the tomatoes. And really that has to do with your mise en place and your organization. You sh I cannot at this stage be missing ingredients in my dish. So, uh, that lends itself to uh, uh, the end of the day. Um, we got to take this home um, and wrap up and talk about our finals for next week. Um, and just preparing, I guess, for next week uh, and debriefed. So uh, yeah, that was sort of our day 14 of culinary school. I appreciate you listening to me vent. Uh, I'm sure there's like one or two of you just watching. So uh, I appreciate you guys watching and I will talk to you guys next time. Peace.